Hi everyone, welcome back to the Possum Stamps YouTube channel. This is Marla with Mad About Cards and Crafts and today I'm sharing a new card featuring the Cup of Tea stamp set. I did show the entire stamp set in a previous video so I will link that in the description box or actually at the end of this video. I am going to be doing some Copic coloring so I have some Copic friendly paper, Copic friendly ink and I have this tall teapot and I want to turn this teapot into a vase which is a very easy process. I make it a little bit more difficult than it needs to be but that's because I'm just not thinking about what I'm doing. So I'm going to use some micro pour tape to mask off the top lid of the teapot but I forget that I do need the outline of the top of the teapot. So here I'm going to add my ink and remove the micro pour tape. I should have seen it right here, but I don't. And then when I stamp it again, I'm gonna miss something as well. So it happens to every crafter. There are just times that you're in the groove and you really know what you're doing and you're paying attention to it. And then there's other times where you're just not thinking. And this was one of those I'm not thinking days. So here I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna use my fingernails to kind of go around to take that tape and kind of press it around the edge so that I can get that ink on there but I still miss a middle section because I pressed it down a little bit harder it is going to take me a little bit more effort to get the tape off and there you can see I missed another spot so with the beauty of the Misty, I have the Misty 2.0 here. You can stamp a third time, make sure your paper's in the right spot and get that beautiful crisp image. I do use scissors to cut out this teapot. I cut out the center of the handle as well because I did want that background to show through. And I did want to mention that Possum Stamps is going to be bringing out a die set for this. So if you've purchased this or you're leaning towards purchasing it, but you really want the dies that go with it, they are going to be coming soon. They heard the request and they are fulfilling it by creating the dies for this. So that's fantastic news. Keep your eye out for that. I did not have any pixie spray. I'm out of pixie spray. So I'm using my purple tape and I taped it to the back of my watercolor paper. This is just Canson XL inexpensive watercolor paper. I do like to use the Canson when I'm doing some of my mixed media because it does, it's a heavier weight cardstock and it takes this mixed media product much better. I'm using this little scraper here to spread this crackle paste. This is Tim Holtz crackle paste. I'm creating a fairly clean and simple card, but I wanted to use the crackle paste because I thought that it would give it a little bit more texture. It would be really cute if you didn't want to text use the texture paste on the entire stencil and maybe just do a portion of the stencil. I wanted that whole background to be that brick look, so I used the full stencil. I did off camera kind of take my finger around the edges and set it aside to dry, and I did clean off my stencil and the tools that I used really quickly to make sure that they didn't dry on the stencil and the tools because it's a lot harder to get it off if it's dried. Here I'm doing my Copic coloring. I did show you the colors that I used. If you want to rewind and kind of put it on pause, you can see all of the colors that I used in this portion. I do color my critter, which is the little hedgehog, and the bees off camera. So I'm just going to color up this teapot and you can see the markers on the screen that I'm using. I start with my darkest marker and I add my shadows. Uh, as you could see, I went back and added shadows underneath the lip of the top of the teapot as well as around the door and under the window. I'll reinforce some of those, blend it out with my mid-tone, and here I'm going around the door, and then I'll blend that out as well. I'll also bring in that darker color a little bit more at the bottom. And finally, I'll use my lightest color and I'll blend all of that out. I am going to use some brown markers on the 
around the door edge and on the door as well as on the window and the window box. I'm using some flowers that I had in my stash. They were actually sitting on the side of my desk and I knew when I saw this stamp set that I wanted to use it to create a vase. If you've ever watched a Jennifer McGuire video, she talks a lot about looking at stamps and trying to figure out five ways that you could use that stamp before you purchase it. And I knew that this would be a perfect vase. You could do that with the cups. You could ask, actually mask off the top of the cups. You could do it with the other teapot and mask that off and put some plants on the inside. Whatever you have in your stash, any of those types of die cuts would work. Uh, the die cuts that I'm using are actually from the greenery, but Tim Holtz has some wonderful greenery and some wonderful florals that would work perfectly for this as well. I'm using some light green markers, so I'm using a G00 and I believe a G02 on the little plant inside the window box. And then, as I said, I'm using these brown markers. I added some red to my florals, and so when, once I start putting my florals together with this teapot, I realize that I need to bring in a little bit more red. So off camera, where I'm outlining with this brown marker, I'm gonna bring in a R59 marker, and I am going to add some red tones because it was just falling a little bit too flat for me. I'm going to add some dimension as always. You know I love my dimension, so I'm going to add it to the back of this teapot. And then you're going to get a look at the back of the panel. I wanted to make sure that it was laying really flat, so I used some double-sided tape on the back of this. And I have an A2 top folding size card base, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. This panel will fit over the entire card base. So look at how pretty that crackling is underneath. It adds just a little bit more texture to a clean and simple card. I'll remove the foam backing and add these florals. I did color the inside of the window. It's really hard to see, but I did use a B000 marker to color the inside of that window. And I'm going to remove the last of that. And here I'm going to start layering in my florals. And then I'll put this on my card and we'll start working on my sentiment. And I think this is just absolutely adorable. little tape there and there we go. So I do have a flag from my stash and that is what's going to uh, be what I add my sentiment to. First I'm going to add some foam to the back of these little bees. These bees are part of the stamp set and they're probably one of my favorite little features in there. I think that they are the cutest little things and I think that you know flowers they need to be pollinated so we needed those bees. Here's that flag. I do have some Memento Teal Zeal ink and I'm going to ink up my sentiment and then I will add some foam adhesive to the back of this flag and we're going to place it right underneath that vase. That foam tape, I tell you, it is like, it, it drives me crazy. I have a love-hate relationship with it. The backing is really staticky and so it's really hard to get off and then it sticks to your fingers but I really love the dimension that it gives. I will add the hedgehog and then I am going to uh, show you a, a look at the finished card. That finished card will have that red around the window and the door and that will finish off my card for today. So I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.